Good evening to our in-house audience and our viewing public. My name is Kendall Elva, and it is indeed an honor for me to welcome everyone to the first vice presidential debate of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia. This body is currently preparing for elections, and elections have been slated for the 27th of May at the Financial Administrative Center, and that particular meeting shall take place from 9 a.m. And the organization believes that it is necessary for people to get an idea as to the various plans and proposals that the individuals who are vying for the first vice presidential position of the NYC, that people get to know what some of these ideas are, but also for people to understand who are the individuals who are vying for these positions. So at least our young people, the members of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia, and I'm referring to individuals between the ages of 15 to 45, and persons who form part of youth organizations in St. Lucia, at least two persons, would be representing each uh, club in terms of voting at the General Assembly. And what we will be doing is that, as moderator, I will be asking at least four major questions, and then we are going to proceed to the in-house audience who will pose questions to our first vice presidential candidates. These questions will cover at least five broad areas, and they are as follows. Personal philosophy and experience, regional integration, membership, foreign relations, and the various plans that the, in the, the two individuals would be looking to execute if that individual gets elected. Let me say that before we go to our candidates, that the first vice president of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia has responsibility for networking and ensuring that the organization is properly represented at the regional and international level. So in terms of the gist of the responsibility, it is a matter of handling the, the, the foreign relations aspect of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia. And at this moment, I would like to introduce our first vice presidential candidates. And to my immediate right, we have Miss Kim Kayol. And I want to say to you, welcome, Kim Kayol. And so my far right, we have Mr. Nias Alfred. Let us get started. In terms of you, you have accepted the responsibility to become the first vice president of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia. Can you say to us, what is your philosophical stance of life? So at least we get to know who you are as a person. So we'll start with Ms. Kayol. I am of the belief, and I grew up in a voluntary family. So voluntarism is one of my A plus things that I feel needs to be grounded to your community. And being grounded to my community is something that is family oriented for me. I also value our family relationships, I value friendships, I value things like that, and community base as well. So for me, partnerships, networking is something that's very important for the lives of youth, and this is something that I value. Thank you very much. Mr. Alfred? Well, I am, I've, and I've always been known as a people's person. Wherever I go from the school level to um, community level as well, throughout my community, I've always been known as a people's person. And the one thing that I believe in is that as a young person, as a youth leader um, in <coughs> particular, you have to make, make the best use of the person around you. Mm -hmm. You have to make the best use of the talents of the people around you. So I'm very into you know, helping persons as part of a team. I enjoy working as part of a team. And I believe that 
I mean, if you are a member of a team, the team cannot function properly unless every single member of that team is performing to their fullest potential. So as a member of a team, I always try to ensure that I try to uplift the people around me. Because when I uplift them, the team looks good, and in so doing then, everybody looks good. And that's the approach that I take to life in general, whether it be persons in my family, friendships. If I have a friend who's not doing something that is, you know, too well, I'd pull them up and, you know, let them know that, you know what, there's my stance on that. That's probably what you need to change. And I mean, it's all about helping each other. And in terms of my philosophy, I think that would be my biggest one. Thank you very much, Mr. Alfred. But still on this given uh, topic in terms of personal philosophy and experience, can you share with us your professional experience, academic experience, and link that to the responsibility of a first vice president of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia? Yeah. In terms of my academics, I have been involved in early childhood education, also training for facilitators in terms of early years of youth, pretty early. So this is in terms of my academics and what I bring to the table. I'm a trainer for the early childhood sector as well. And in terms of my international backgrounds and so on, I have been volunteering and working from a very, very young age with my family in terms of international countries where we've been through the USA with Youth to Youth Worldwide. I've been through to Santo Domingo, Haiti, and Martinique because those are my cultural backgrounds. And also, this is part of what I do on a regular basis. And it triggers down to community as well and back to St. Lucia. <laughs> Mr. Alfred? Well, in terms of my academic experience, I'm very proud to say that you know, I attended the Chusel Secondary School from when I went to A-level. And my experience, I decided to go up first and foremost for the post of vice president, first vice president, because I believe that my experience allowed me to contribute better in that capacity. Um, as a student of the South Louis Community College, I was selected as a handful of stu CARICOM student ambassadors um, through the program CARICOM, well, CSME student ambassadors. Um, students engage in the CSME through field promotions. I served as student ambassador from 2009 to 2011, in which um, during that period we had projects in Guyana and in Antigua as well. And when I left school, I became involved with the OECS commission, most recently as part of the OECS youth strategy. I was actually one of the founding, the first persons on board in actually trying to develop the OECS youth strategy. And through that program, I have gotten the opportunity to network with persons from all across the region. Um, in 2015, I actually represented the OECS at the International Sports Conference, which is something I'm very passionate about, sports. Last year in April, I spoke at the Ministers of Youth and Directors of Youth Conference in St. Kitts. Um, I was also a guest panelist this year at a regional workshop regional conference in Anguilla. That was a public education series um, for the OECS. Last year as well, I was a guest um, at, the OECS, at the Anguilla 12th Conference on Youth and Development. And that is only, well, some of the activities that I've been involved with at a regional at an, at an international level. And I mean, I believe that experience is something that would, has already prepared me for the post of first vice president. So I know for a fact that when I get into the role, that I will have adapted as quickly as possible and I will get the ground running. Thank you very much. I know that both of you are youth leaders and to an extent you have indicated the organizations that you are a part of, but I, I think that there is still need just to indicate in terms of your membership of youth and sports organizations, can you please provide some details and a, a synopsis in terms of what you do or um, the position that to actually hold in such organizations. I am the president of UVYO, and this is a community group that just won the Community Achievement Award this year, Youth Awards. I also serve in other countries as a youth leader and youth advocate. So I, I also have passion, not only in St. Lucia, but elsewhere <laughs> for youth, and in terms of my volunteering service putting programs like leadership programs together. We also have um, sports programs that we've done with my other groups 
in terms of football, in terms of um, getting young people, young mothers to, to attend programs for parenting and all of that in Martinique. So I have done some of that work overseas and in St. Lucia I've also forwarded leadership programs, um, self-defense with my own personal group, community groups. We have done stuff like gender-based violence and um, LGBT um, programs to incorporate our young people and to get them into different, different um, you know, programming and, and understanding of how, how can we move forward as youth. So these are some of the things that I have participated in, whether it be in St. Lucia or in other countries. I have also been a part of Youth to Youth Worldwide for quite a few years, I think since I was 15. So this is also a certificate program that we do year after year after year. It teaches us to be leaders. It teaches us to implement programs into our communities. And these are things that I've been part of and can agitate here as well as the first vice president with my networking and, and, and all my contacts that I have already made. I can partner here and try to bring out some sustainable programs for our young people. Thank you. Mr. Alfred? Well, in terms of group involvement, um, I am the co-founder and director of sports media organization, Sport Avi. And basically the role of Sport Avi is to give exposure for our young persons in sports and actually to provide them with opportunities to develop themselves, whether it be through academics or through their various sporting disciplines. I'm very proud to say that through collaboration with the OECS last year, that Sport Avi was able to launch regionally. So right now we actually provide our services as a non-profit, mostly um, to youth, not just in St. Lucia, but across the OECS. We give them, um, it comes from you know, giving them exposure, helping them with profiles for their various sports, helping them in terms of applications for school and actually trying to get funding for school. So that is something that I'm really proud of and through continued collaboration with the OECS, and I really have to thank them for their assistance thus far. Um, that has been going on. And I mentioned earlier about my involvement with OECSES. And OECSES is a program, well, initiated by the OECS Secretariat that tries to, it is attempting to create a youth strategy that is born out of the ideas of young people. So OECS Youth Empowered Society, that's what OECSES stands for. Um, we've gone through to various countries, basically on a community level, trying to meet with persons at the grassroots level, trying to meet with persons um, during focus group discussions to create a strategy that is tailored for young people. There's a lot of the time we have, we have youth policies being made and you know, they're just telling us what, the, what is wrong with young people and what should be done for young people. But the approach that OECS yes, is taking is that we are going to the young people. The young people are our consultants. We are telling them, what do you want? What do you want us to achieve? And what OECS yes, is doing is trying to create a document so that the OECS Secretariat can actually try to implement a lot of these programs. And I mean, apart from Sport AV and OECSES, yes, I've also been involved on a community level. I am currently the public relations officer of the Shoes Elephant Sports Council. I'm very involved in community activities in my community, community development group from a very early age. Um, so my involvement does not continue, does not stop there. I always try to advise as much as possible to anybody who seeks my advice. Um, my association, well, my organization, Sport AV, we just won our second consecutive Youth in Media Award. Um, so that must mean that you know, we're doing something good and we just want to continue doing the good work that we are doing for the benefit of young persons in St. Lucia. Thank you very much, Mr. Alfred. Let us move on to the theme of regional integration. Mm -hmm. The CARICOM single market and economy has been described as a framework through which we unite our economies within the Caribbean community. Do you believe that young people stand to benefit from the CSME? And in what way you believe that young people can benefit from the CSME? In terms of the CSME, I still think there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of inclusion and in terms of us as a National Youth Council partnering and networking with them. There are benefits for young people, but I still believe that there's a lot that we need to sit down and go through in terms of the drawing board and 
continue with when it comes to CSME. So young people can benefit a lot more. Young people can have another voice, a louder voice, and we can advocate for different things. So in terms of CSME, it, there is a plus, but we still need to work on some things together and partner and network. Okay, well, in terms of CSME, I think the issue is with education and information being shared. Because I'm pretty sure that a lot of young persons do know of a lot of the benefits that exist mm -hmm. from the CSME. And as a former mm -hmm. CSME student ambassador, mm -hmm. I can tell you that CSME has a lot of, I'm, I'm sure young persons in St. Lucia, professionals in St. Lucia, do not know that they have the opportunity not just to get employment in St. Lucia, but in other countries as well. As a member of the OECS, all you need to get is get your skills certificate and you can actually get employment as, um, if you're a teacher, mm -hmm. if you're a musician, you don't have to limit yourself to the 238 square miles that we have. Mm -hmm. There are other countries in the OECS that can actually go to get the information. In terms of regional integration, not just CSME, but on the OECS level, mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of young persons don't know that you can get indefinite stay at any OECS country. If you go to, the, um, to Antigua, to Dominica, they cannot ask you how long you're staying for. The passport is stamped indefinite, and you can actually get employment. So right now, young people have to understand that our job market as young people, not just our labor market, but where we can express ourselves, is not just St. Lucia anymore. It has expanded to within the Caricom region, within the OECS region. So I think that as the NYC, one of the things that we need to do is to collaborate with the Caricom youth ambassadors to ensure that programs are put in place to educate young people about the benefits mm -hmm. of being part of the CSM and what you can actually do mm -hmm. to actually contribute to the movement. Thank you, Mr. Alfred, and thank you, Ms. Kayol. The NYC, its highest decision-making body is the General Assembly. And the General Assembly is constituted by youth and sports organizations at the community level. There are persons who say that there is a lack of interest on the part of the average young person as it relates to joining youth and sports organizations. We, for casual observation, there is the issue where people will say to you that the grassroots community-based youth organization is not as active as it used to be in the heydays of NYC. Mm -hmm. as First Vice President, what do you intend to do to get more young people involved in the work of the NYC and joining these youth and sports organizations at the community level? Ms. Kayol. I am the immediate past Assistant General Secretary of the National Youth Council, so I do have internal knowledge as to what were some of the issues and have done a sort analysis on my personal level to understand what it is. I've also worked with the 19 districts in that tenure, so I'm quite aware of what the disconnect is and what are some of the issues, um, what we call unattached youth, are faced with. In, when it comes to community base and grassroots, we do have a lot of grassroots clubs, but they need support. And their support system, there's a hierarchy. So you have the grassroots system and the grassroots organizations, their support comes from their district youth and sports councils. And the district youth and sports councils, their support comes from the NYC, the umbrella body. So as your first vice president, I would like to initiate, along with my team, the NYC I want to see program. And this program covers what we say inclusion. It includes the district youth and sports councils revamping the organizations, also our clubs and at a community level. And <laughs> this is something that as a first vice president, I would like to see. So we do a SWOT analysis with all the stakeholders involved, including the autism society, including differently abled, including LGBT, including uniform groups, and to come with a different program that would assist us from the grassroots bottoms up approach. Thank you, Ms. Kayao. Um, Ms. Elva, you mentioned, um, well, during the question that the General Assembly is basically the governing body of the National Youth Council. And I think we can all say from knowledge, from past experience, that the General Council, a lot of young persons don't actually attend. We probably, if we meet a, a quorum during the General Assembly, 
then you do not get as full participation for young people. And mm -hmm. I mean, the problem of participation of clubs on a whole, um, through my district event sports council in Shuizel, we had that experience where you know, we kept calling um, meetings, we kept calling for persons to actually come and get involved, and persons were not showing up. Persons no longer have that zeal to volunteer to get involved. So the approach that we used, and I agree completely with Miss Kyle when she said about the bottom step approach, mm -hmm. the approach that we used, we actually started going to the, the, the various um, clubs, going to the communities, speaking with the young people, and letting them know what's going on, because if as a National Youth Council, you have to wait for them to come to us, they will not they're, not serving, we're not, they're not serving us, we are serving them. So the onus is on us, and as first vice president, I will um, actually try to get my team to actually go out there, visit the communities in Shuzel, in Denry, the clubs, and actually speak to them, speak to them about how they can get involved in the community level, how they can start volunteering, how they can start, start contributing. And I think if we're able to do that approach, just like the approach that has been taken with the OECS youth strategy, actually getting the ideas of young people, I think if we start from that point, we can actually start pulling them in using them as resources um, in the NYC. When we pick out good representatives, trying to fit them in various committees in the NYC to help them contribute and to help them, well, basically the ideas feel a lot more valued than it is already. Thank you very much, candidates. You have both submitted manifestos, mm -hmm. and that entails the plans and proposals that you intend to implement. Mm -hmm. Can you select at least two items that you intend to work on, or programs or activities mm -hmm. that can serve to strengthen the National Youth Council of St. Lucia and give us an idea of what it is, these two plans and, uh, or proposals. Mm -hmm. One of my plans and proposals is to also re assist in the revamping of the organization. We speak now to millennial youth, and this is the approach that we need to take the approach where young people have changed and to bring forth innovation and technology. Those are some of my past projects that I started while I was already you know, as a, serving as an Assistant General Secretary to network with ambassadors, network with outside entities, UNESCO, um, the um, environmental groups, Jeff, um, to pretty much get funding for my, for my programs, which will start at our, our community level programs for entrepreneurship, where we start with our DYSCs also, and to let them, you know, pretty much have our, our young people involved in things that they would want to go and see forward. So one of those things would be that, to find funding for, for programs like entrepreneurship, um, programs for young mothers, and to pretty much get back at the grassroots level. One of the other programs that I want to see, I would also like to get my what I say, autism society off the ground, to represent them at a different level. I want to have also inclusion of our young entrepreneurs and also our young community workers and what we don't like to call at unattached youth. Get them involved in our programs and in our structures for, for our organizations so that they can assist the DYSCs, they can assist the youth clubs with whatever talents and tap into capabilities that we don't normally see. So these are pretty much a few of the programs I have in mind. Thank you, Ms. Kyle. Mr. Alfred? Well, um, as a first vice president, yes, the, the main goal is um, in terms of international relations, but I also believe that outside of that, a first vice president has to be able to contribute. So, I mean, one of the ideas that I'm very passionate about in terms of actually contributing to the National Youth Council, um, I'm a sports person. And I love to see sports moving forward. And I, I always get some sort of chill when I hear persons saying, all we're doing in St. Lucia is sports. And I, I'm always <laughs> quick to tell people, people running around the field and playing a game of football is not sports development. Sports development is so much more than that. So one of the programs that I actually want to see developed within the National Youth Council is in terms of collaboration with the sporting associations to bring on basically sports that are not part of the mainstream, not, so not sports like cricket or football, but sports like tennis, swimming, table tennis, bring them at a grassroots level. Actually speak to the associations to get people, because I'm from Chuzel and we only have one recognized swimmer in Chuzel, which is Maki Manus. 
I would love to see persons from shows that actually been interested in playing tennis, in playing, um, in doing swimming. Because these are all Olympic sports. And that's actually an opportunity that you can get if you pick them up at a young age to actually help them help contribute to, you know, them being involved in this particular sport. So sports like tennis, table tennis, bring them to the smaller communities. Tennis doesn't have only have to be for the youth of the North. Swimming doesn't only have to be for the youth of the North. We can bring it to the communities like Ancillary, the communities of Soufre, Chouzel. So that is one thing that I want to see done in terms of collaboration with the um, sporting associations. If you can get funding um, for these grassroots programs, that is something that I really want to see um, enacted. And another thing that I'm really passionate about is a big brother, big sister program. I know it has been thrown around here and there, but it's about time that somebody takes action. Because I think we can all agree that one of the major problems that we face right now in terms of, is in terms of you've been idle, in terms of crime. So if you can have young persons in the community, outstanding young persons, actually mentor the young persons from the disadvantaged communities, then that can go a long way into actually helping to develop the young people from a very early age. And I was very happy to hear... Mr. Alfred, yeah, I'm on your time. time has expired for this particular question. Mm -hmm. At this moment, I would like to invite our in-studio audience to pose questions at our uh, candidates for first vice president of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia. And we are now going to have a question from Ms. Louis Victor, who is the immediate uh, Past president of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia. Good evening, everyone. Okay. Mr. Alfred, Ms. Kayo. Um, we've all been in the movement and we all understand um, what our struggles are. Some of what has been mentioned is what was constantly highlighted um, throughout our tenure. And administratively, in the, the last executive, there was a bit of unrest in terms of person's always moving on. So administratively, I would say the, the last administration never got to quite settle um, as a team to get working. Um, Ms. Kyle, my first question is to you. You spoke of millen mil well dealing with millennials. Mm -hmm. We know the situation with our constitution. Mm -hmm. We speak of wanting to engage, but my question is strategically and tactically. Mm -hmm. How are we going to engage? We speak of social media, we are using social media, but have we as young people, as young governors, I should say, have we fully understood the power of not just social media, but digital media? Mm -hmm. So I pose this question to you both in terms of not what, but how are we going to strategically move forward in terms of engagement? Because we know that NYC's logo tagline is participation peace progress and we if we are honest with ourselves participation has not been what it should be so how are we going to engage to encourage young people to actively participate this is something that has been coming up and we know for quite a while and as a first vice president i would like to introduce to general assembly what my team calls zonal coordinators or zonal leaders under my stewardship. This would mean that we have other young leaders separated in four, into four zones, which would work with the district youth and sports councils and would also work with the groups on the grassroots level. This is part, also part of our communication or PRO plan because communication and filtering down has always been an, quite an issue. So in terms of zoning, zoning, our 19 districts with persons and youth coordinators pretty much, or leaders, I think this would assist in us getting what we say, um, the disconnect pretty much out of it, and to also assist the DYSCs, assist the grassroots levels to come together and work with the NYC to push programming and to push networking forward, and to also make it a hype thing to be back into volunteering. So our programming really needs to be on point when it comes to, when it comes to our 
let's say, persons who do not really want to be attached to a group, but they can give something and they're willing to give back. And we have a lot of those people around. A lot of young persons who say to you, I don't want to necessarily be in a group, but I would like to be involved. So inclusion would be something that our zoning would assist with. Community helpers, all of those persons would be part of the zoning to create inclusion and to create pretty much what we'd like to see, one youth going forward. Thank you, Ms. Kayol. Mr. Alfred, can you share your sentiments with regards to the question which was posed? Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Um, Louise, for the question. And actually like the fact that you mentioned about participation and especially in terms of social media. Because on a professional experience, one of the things that has made my organization on a personal level so successful is the use of social media. And we always hear that, you know, we have the technology, we have the social media, but it's not working. Mm -hmm. It can work. It just has to be used properly. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the things that has been one of our very strong points if social media is used properly. There are other tools that are available to actually get young people to participate. You have Facebook, you have the Facebook Insights, where you can actually see if you post something, who is reading the post? The other persons are from Shuzel, from Sufre. The use of videos to actually target young people because I'm sure that if any of us go to Facebook, we'll see a paragraph and we'll see a video. We'll quicker click on the video than we'll click on the, on the long writing. <laughs> I mean, that's all things that we can use. We can actually try to use the tool. Um, if it means that the NYC executive has to sit down through a course, because you have courses on Allison, you have courses on Coursera, we can actually learn about social media development and about technology and about actually getting young persons to participate. I think if we can use it properly, then I see no way in which we cannot target young persons. Because you have to admit, everywhere you go, young persons are on their mobiles. It is easier to try to get them on their phones, on WhatsApp, on Instagram, instead of actually inviting them to a town hall meeting. So it can work. We can get young persons to participate, but we need to get down to their level. And we actually need to use the tools which are available to us and not just use them, but learn how to use them properly. And I think if we're able to do that properly, then we can actually get young persons more involved, go out to the various communities, take out, you know, do videos and all these things. And like I said, even properly, I see no reason why it cannot work. Thank you to you both. We are continuing in terms of taking questions from the audience. We have had one. And in terms of our structure, we have four more questions from the audience. So I now invite the members of the audience to pose questions to Mr. Myers Alfred and Ms. Kim Kayol. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I've been in youth work for the past years, and NYC has been absent. And I'm saying that Basically, we do not hear much. I'm, president, I'm presently the president of the Babano Youth and Sports Council. And my thing is, coming into this new election, I'm going to ask, have you all looked back on the years as to where NYC was? And it is so easy to say we have all of these plans on mm -hmm. the table, but we also need to be very realistic. Mm -hmm. And like anything else, we watch politics, or anybody wanting to come forward as to helping, quote unquote, the youth and embracing the whole volunteer system and all of that. But I'm asking both of you, what really do you see you guys bringing to the table? Forget all the, the, the we can do this and we can do that. Let's get down to the bottom line. The reality of it is NYC is dead. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do in the next year or two years to actually help us or the youth to realize that there is a body that actually has a louder voice for us mm -hmm. and not us continuous, continuously doing the work within our community. Mm -hmm. Because it's okay to speak about Chosel, Babono, um, Central Cash. It's okay to talk about those things. Mm -hmm. But when we speak of NYC, we're speaking about St. Lucia and the regional. So what exactly are you guys going to bring to the table? Because it will be challenging. Yeah. You understand? The funding will not come in the first month or the first day just because you guys have contacts. Mm -hmm. All right? So what really are you guys going to put forward? And two, before I finish, both of you guys have your teams. The reality is 
you will not get everybody from your team succeeding the next election. Mm -hmm. So will it be that both of you will go separate ways if, let's just say, that, let's say, you were able to get in and you were not able to get in, but your president was able to get in? Mm -hmm. At what point will we will be coming together for the quote-unquote agenda you've developed in? Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> thank you. Well, with institutional knowledge, you, we know NYC has not been where it was. But I bring strength to the organization, and I also bring knowledge and well, pretty much a mobilizing person, a person who can advocate, a person who can speak, and who's not afraid to be boisterous when, when the time comes for us to rally together and partner for a cause. In terms of the, of the um, what were you saying, in terms of the young persons and youth leaders coming together under NYC. I went into General Assembly two or, almost two or three years ago, and I did contest for the PRO post, but I didn't win. And I never stayed far from NYC. So I believe whichever one, yes, we are from different teams, but there should be a level of maturity that comes with that. And this is what we've been lacking in NYC. And I believe whichever one goes in, we are both strong leaders. We both, he has sports, I have youth development. We both have our strengths. No matter who wins, I believe we should stay in our communities and to assist the other in terms of whatever they have to do. His programs are good, mine are good. We can still partner because we both, as first vice presidents, would hold a, 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 commu a committee so we can be a part of each other's committee to push the youth agenda forward. So I don't think we should be upset with each other whether we won or didn't. Last, last General Assembly, I didn't win. I stayed close to NYC. I left NYC, still worked in the background. I am still working in the background. So no matter what the outcome of this General Assembly, I continue to pledge my advocacy for youth and whichever person wins. Mr. Alfred, thank you, Ms. Kayo. Okay, thank you very much for your question. And one of the first things that you said was whether or not we'd actually gone back and spoken to persons who had been in the NYC during its heyday and actually you know, get a gist of what NYC was all about when it was at its highest. And mm -hmm. I remember a couple last week, a couple weeks ago, when I went to the Parliament House during the debate sitting. And I, we got a small moment to actually sit and speak with one of the founding members of the NYC back in 1985, that is Ernest Hille, who also served as president. And I think that's something that we need to do, to actually go back and try to speak with them, get advice from them. Um, so in terms of that, that is something that actually we've already started. In terms of what I bring to the table, um, I bring strong leadership from a community level, from the national level in terms of my organization on the regional level as well. And I bring the attitude that everybody, no matter who you are, has a, a role to play, has a very important role to play. And I believe in bringing people together. And you ask what I can do for you. NYC, yes, NYC is St. Lucia, but NYC is not the governing body, not the main authority of the youth of St. Lucia. It's a general assembly. So I need to come to you to find out what you want and see how we can work together to help achieve the goals that you want to achieve. And in terms of as well in terms of the collaboration and the teams. I've sat down with my team and we've gone through the resumes of the opposing teams and each and every one of them has a fantastic resume. They have brilliant programs on a personal level. You have persons who've been involved. Um, the General Secretary Diane Fee has been with the NYC for such a long time, even when persons have been billing, she's been there. Mr. Sidney has his um, has been very instrumental in a lot of programs in St. Lucia. Ms. Kim Kyle needs no introduction. So that's all persons that we can actually help bring in. So no matter, like Ms. Kyle said, I agree with her completely, mm -hmm. that no matter who wins, every single person is a resource, and a resource that we can use, we can use to collaborate. Um, so in that case, I think Ms. Kyle and I, first Vice President, we are on very good terms. Yes, we are. So <laughs> I don't think that would be much of an issue in terms of collaborating and working together, even we though our prospective teams do not win. Thank you to you both. And uh, now we have another question from our in studio audience. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, my question, or yeah, my question to you is that um, we've seen lacking in both um, government um, 
other um, institutions and organizations that um, decide and, and instill policies. Right? Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lack of continuation, even with our governments, so they are not talking about plans that were here mm -hmm. before. And it's not, it's, it has died. What I want to know is that, what do you see, or where do you see all the plans? What do we do with all the plans that we have voted on? Um, we have put down on paper and somehow have virtually shelved. Where do you see that going? Where do you see these plans going? Because there are a lot of plans for a revamping of um, NYC. There's lots of plans for the um, um, changing or putting in a new constitution for the NYC. There's also um, plans for branding the NYC, which was spoken of, but these plans have not fulfilled or come to fruition. Um, where do you see that going? And um, what is your take on an advisory body or professional body as a subset of the NYC helping with um, the drive of continuation and for professionalism? Thank you, sir. Well, I think Mr. Marshall is talking about the mandate of the last General Assembly in terms of revamping the NYC and all of those things were brought up at the last General Assembly. Unfortunately, it wasn't able to go through. With institutional knowledge and with a backing from NYC, I believe I'm knowledgeable enough to assist whichever executive that is coming in. So we cannot always go forward without going back first. So we must know what existed because we cannot retrain the wheel all of the time. We must see what the mandate of the last General Assembly was. We must also see the mandate, the new mandate that will be given on the 27th of May and try to put those things together and push programming and push whatever it is that needs to be done in terms of the revamping of that organization and um, pretty much our, the youth center that was already put in place by the last executive. Well, pretty much the getting to, <laughs> getting to the bottom of it. And um, with a first vice president as myself, with that knowledge, I think I can assist with both the past and the, and the present with, with uh, the mandates of the last General Assembly and, and incoming General Assembly. Um, so, in terms of um, policies and stuff that were there before, the most that we can do now is to come together, form our committees, sit together and decide who are, where our strengths are, and to partner with young people who can push those things forward. As young people, the most we can do is to do it together. Thank you very much, Ms. Kyle. Mm -hmm. Mr. Alfred. Okay. Um, I'm never one to believe in completely starting off on a clean slate where it is in an organization such as the NYC. So anybody who gets elected to the NYC, we have to sit down with the previous executive, find out what programs were they already, mm -hmm. the stage of development of particular programs, and actually getting an idea from them of where certain things stand. Because it doesn't make sense to start off an organization and just have things completely new, not finding out from the previous executive what could have been done or what was close to being done. So that is one thing that is very key in terms of liaising with the president of the last, the last um, youth council. We have the president here right now, and I, I'm pretty sure she'd be very um, open to you know, dialoguing with us and serving in an advisory role as well and other persons of the executive. So that is something that is essential really, really, really essential. And in terms of the whole advisory thing, um, my team has actually sat down. And the Constitution names a couple of committees. And I mean, to the discretion of the executive, you can actually create other committees yourself. And we've actually started shortlisting persons in the event that we were to win, persons that we can bring in in the capacity to help develop the NYC or to contribute. Sports, there are many resource persons in sports in St. Lucia that we can actually get to assist on that level, international relations, PR. There are young persons, talented young persons in St. Lucia, so it's all about bringing them together. The NYC executive cannot do it by themselves. We should not try to do it by ourselves, but we should try to help pull in and rope in the persons who have the experience. I spoke recently to um, the legal advisor for the, on the electoral committee. Brilliant young man, I went to school with him. I'd like to see a young man like that actually get roped into the NYC in terms of a legal capacity, because NYC will face legal issues. Mm -hmm. So it's all about roping the young persons around us and actually getting them to 
contribute to the organization that we all want to see move forward. Thank you very much, sir. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rejan Montut, um, first vice president of the Grosley Youth Development Council and mm -hmm. candidate for the running of general secretary for the NYC. Um, my question is posed to both candidates. Um, given the situations like Brexit and Donald Trump's approach to nationalism, what are your views on globalization? And do you believe that youth of a small island developing state like St. Lucia can actually benefit from organizations like CARICOM and the OACS? And how would you use your post if you were to be first vice president um, in charge of international relations to that benefit of the youth? Thank you, Ms. Montut. Ms. Kayao. In terms of globalization, this is where we bring in and partner with youth organizations like WE, World Assembly of Youth. This is an organization that, is, that I came across during my, my own time in the US with Youth to Youth. And this is an organization that brings youth together and we works with, with NYCs. So an organization like that would really assist us in terms of partnering with all kinds of global issues, um, environmental issues. So Waze is a, one of the networking companies or organizations that I would really like to see partner with us to assist us with all of those programs and initiatives. Thank you. Okay, in terms of globalization, one of the mandates of the first vice president of the NYC is actually to keep abreast of international developments mm -hmm. that are affecting us. Um, Ms. Montutu mentioned Donald Trump's approach on nationalism and in terms of Brexit. And I mean, all of these have, whether it be directly or indirectly, some part to play in you know, a small island nation such as St. Lucia and the youth of St. Lucia do have a view on it. So as first vice president, um, when these matters come up, it's all about dialogue with the young people. What do you think of that? What do you um, put them in together into a, a, a group setting to find out their views on it? Um, get it televised on NTN where you can have, actually have a, a young moderator sitting down with young persons to discuss these issues because mm -hmm. whether we want to believe it or not, they actually do affect us in one way or another. So in terms of that, that is something that we can take. And in terms of actually the what we can gain from organizations such as CARICOM and, and the OECS, we are all small island nations in the CARICOM and in the OECS. And one of the things that we have in common is what affects young persons in one country is normally what affects young persons in another country. Our problem of unemployment may not be unique to just St. Lucia. It's unique to other countries of the Caribbean as well. So I think in that scenario, what we need to do is to network with the youth leaders from the other countries. I was in Anguilla recently and actually quite liked one of the programs when it dealt with entrepreneurship, which is something that they adopted from Dominica. So if we are having an issue with solving our problem of unemployment in St. Lucia, why can't we network with other youth leaders in the CARICOM countries, in the OECS countries, to find out what's working for them and to find out if we implement it on a local level, whether or not it will work for us. So yes, Ms. Montut, I do believe that there is some benefit that can be gained from organizations like that, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to the networking and whether or not we can you know, help the young persons in the Caribbean, not just them helping us, but whether or not we can help them as well. Thank you to you both. And for our final question from our in-studio audience. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My question um, focuses more on the issue of international relations. Mm -hmm. The NYC receives a subvention of $42,000, which we have heard complaints that, okay, it's not enough. Um, and um, there is a need to raise more funding or raise more resources. Money is not the only thing you need, but only te also technical resources. So mm -hmm. in your plans, or, or do you have any ideas of how you can proceed with building relationships that can generate resources for the NYC? Thank you, Mr. Ferdinand. Ms. Kayao. As immediate past assistant general secretary, I began partnering with ambassadors during my tenure. And I was able to get, get through with some ambassadors to assist in funding some programs. 
Um, I started with a cultural program. So in terms of funding, I think ambassadors on an island basis, we can target them. Also, when it comes to grants and, and stuff like that, we look at, at UNESCO, we look at, the, there is what you call the Australian grant funding. They are also a youth organization which is prepared to assist youth around the world in terms of funding for projects. So these are the persons that we can partner with, UNESCO and, and um, UNDP, all of those um, organizations. We can partner with them for funding for our programs and whatever else the NYC needs to push forward. <coughs> Okay, um, in terms of the funding, I do agree, Mr. Ferdinand, that $42,000 is not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We need to get the grant funding coming in to fund mm -hmm. the projects of the National Youth Council. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that would be key as part of an executive is the ability to actually source these types of funding. Mm -hmm. So in that scenario, you actually need persons who are experienced in writing proposals mm -hmm. for grants. And that is something that I, I actually been trained in, mm -hmm. writing proposals for grants. I've applied for grants myself and other persons on my team. I've actually had the experience of getting um, the, the knowledge and the experience in writing grant, um, proposals for grants. And that is something that would be key as we look to get funding for the NYC. And there are organizations out there, a lot of international organizations. Um, you have right here in the OECS, there's the um, CBU, the business unit of the OECS who's staged in Dominica, they actually give funding, technical assistance to young persons involved in entrepreneurship. You write down a proper proposal, you know, they can actually help get you started. There was recently the OECS 3430, which was started by the organization I'm part of, which is OECS, yes, where they have to speak out young persons in the OECS region who actually have entrepreneurial ideas to actually help give them a start. Um, so I think that that is something that we can tap into. We can tap into the various, like Ms. Kyle said, the um, various ambassadors. Mm -hmm. We can tap into various um, international organizations that offer such funding because $40,000 for all the young people in St. Lucia, that is not enough. We need to get something really, we need to get something on the ball and mm -hmm. I mean, it will not happen overnight. We might write one time, it might get rejected, but we have to write again, we have to be persistent because at the end of the day, we have to try to justify to the young persons at the next General Assembly, what we did in order to live up to the mandate that they set for us at the General Assembly. Thank you very much. As we bring this first vice presidential debate to a close, mm -hmm. why should a young person vote Ms. Kim Kayol as first vice president mm -hmm. or vote for Nias Alfred as first vice president of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia. With institutional knowledge, experience, and the determination to push you forward, I believe youth in St. Lucia should look at persons with long-term involvement and grassroots grounding. We vote for Kim Kayol, who is a determined person, who is a leader within the community, and who's also somebody who can assist in pushing the NYC forward. Thank you. Okay, before I ask the young person in St. Lucia, whether I tell them why they should vote for me, I want to let the young person in St. Lucia know that I decided to run for the NYC because I was not in a personal capacity satisfied with the level of representation that was provided to young people. And I could have gone for any post within the NYC. I have five and a half years of experience in banking. I could have gone up for the post of treasurer. But I decided to go up for the post that more closely fits in with my experience on an international level, on a regional level, in terms of networking with young persons from across the Caribbean internationally as well. So a young person in St. Lucia can feel confident in voting for me because they know that I bring a fresh approach. I bring new ideas. I have the experience at all different levels, from the grassroots up to the international level. And I can tell them with a surety that if they vote for me and they vote for my team, it will provide a level of representation that has not already been seen in youth leadership in St. Lucia. And it's not just a matter of words. We can actually back up the words with what we've been doing in the past and what we intend to continue doing through if they read our manifestos, they'll see our ideas. So it's a matter of continuing what we've already been doing on a personal level 
but in the capacity of the NYC and actually trying to push that organization forward. Thank you very much, Ms. Kayol and Mr. Alfred. I believe that you have both articulated your proposals, your ideas quite eloquently. And in terms of the points which have been made, I think it is quite substantive. And I, I believe that both of you are well placed to make a significant contribution as it relates to serving as first vice president of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia. And I would like to thank you for allowing for the young people of St. Lucia to get to know you better and the plans that you have in terms of what you would look to implement as a first vice president. Also, I would like to take this opportunity to remind the young people of St. Lucia that the elections for the National Youth Council of St. Lucia have been slated for the 27th of May at the Financial Administrative Center, and it will commence at 9 a.m. And so we are asking young people on behalf of the National Youth Council of St. Lucia to make a special effort to represent their respective clubs at the General Assembly. I would also like to express my deepest gratitude to our in-studio audience for the questions that you, you posed and to the viewing public. Thank you very much for sharing this time with us. Thank you to everyone. Good evening.